Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Oaks of Righteousness. Oaks of Righteousness. Do you remember hearing that in the book of Isaiah? Well, let's talk about oak trees. What are some things that oak trees symbolize? Well, some of them are goodness, strength, endurance, and knowledge. The oak tree is a symbol of those things. The oak is also known as a treasure of wisdom because it is so strong, big and strong. And because of their root systems that are rugged and extensive, they can withstand powerful storms, even hurricanes and tornadoes. So oak trees are seriously stable, aren't they? Well, let's read um, where it talks about oaks of righteousness is in Isaiah 63, 61, 3c. And it says, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So question, here's the verse right here. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So question, who is they? Who's the they that this verse is talking about? They are the acorn plantings of the Lord. Who are the acorn plantings of the Lord? Let's see. Well, those who are poor in spirit. Those who are brokenhearted. Those who are captives. Those who are prisoners in darkness. Those who grieve those who mourn, those who despair and faint from devastating loss. Those people, you and me, are the acorn plantings of the Lord. So the Lord proclaims good news to these followers. He proclaims good news to the poor in spirit. He is going to bind up the brokenhearted. He proclaims freedom for the captives. He releases from darkness those prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So, have you experienced any of these states of soul, states of heart? Have you experienced any of these? Or are you experiencing any of them now? Or are you experiencing all of them now? I know some of you are. You may not show it, but... I know that it's on the inside of you. And so, because of this context of who this verse is addressing, is talking about you. If you are any of these down here, this verse is for you. So, are you poor in spirit? Are you brokenhearted? Are you imprisoned? Are you mourning or grieving? Well... The Holy Spirit wrote this passage just for you. So I have a question here. How does a mighty oak of righteousness start out? We have this huge, strong tree here, right? So how does it start out? Well, an oak tree starts out as a what? A little bitty acorn. Now this is a drawing of one that is huge compared to an acorn. An acorn is about that big. It's very small. And that is how every oak tree begins as a little acorn. Okay, think about that. A little acorn grows into a huge, strong oak tree. Now, let's read John 12, 24. I tell you for certain that a grain of wheat 
that falls on the ground will never be more than one grain unless it dies. But if it dies, it will produce lots of wheat. So you could say, I'll tell you for certain that an acorn that falls on the ground will never be more than one acorn unless it dies. If it dies, it will produce many more acorns because it will grow up into an oak tree and produce more acorns. And that's exponentially because it would just keep going, right? So for a seed, an acorn or whatever the seed is, to produce more seeds, it must first die. It has to die. In that death, it becomes a tiny tree, which when full grown produces many more seeds. If the seed never dies, it just remains one seed all by itself. Now think about it. When acorns fall to the ground, many get eaten by squirrels, don't they? Of course they do. Others fall on the dry or rocky soil and they never grow. Some, though, find soil with favorable conditions. Okay, so let's look at this diagram. Here is an acorn. Acorns are very small. They're about this big, and they grow on the oak trees, and they fall to the ground, right? Well, when the oak tree falls to the ground and it finds favorable conditions, it starts to grow into an oak tree. And so what does that look like? Well, here is the base of the acorn, which has germinated, and it has broken open. Do you see that opening there? It's opened up, and this tr oak tree is starting to grow. This is the very beginning. And so here is the taproot, which it sends down into the ground to grow and stabilize. And from that taproot, all the whole rugged, extensive root system will grow from that. And then it sends an upward shoot at the same time. And that is the start of the oak tree that you will see above the ground. And so all of this is happening because this acorn fell to the ground and died. It fell to the ground and died. And so that process can happen, all right? It can happen, and so there is a picture here that is, this is important imagery you need to see. So I'm gonna tell you about your acorn to oak tree story. Did you know that you have an acorn to oak tree story? You do. The acorn's process of falling to the ground and dying over here is a picture of your baptism into Christ, leaving your old life behind. The germination of the seed is a picture of the work of the Holy Spirit inside of you, softening your heart. The taproot over here represents the Holy Spirit grounding your roots in Christ. And then the upward shoot here symbolizes the Holy Spirit raising you up to arise in new life in the power of Christ's resurrection. So that is cool, right? That's you. You can be like an acorn when you let the Lord take over your life. That means you are not running your life anymore. You are not in charge. You're not trying to make all your dreams come true. You're not doing all that. You can choose to surrender to Christ, and in a way, you're falling to the ground and dying to your own life so that you can experience his supernatural life. So this is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. And through this death, the Lord will cause a lot of different things to happen in the spirit and you will be a blessing to many people. So let's look at Romans 6, 4. I have it right down here. And it says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, 
we too may live a new life, a new life. So a little bit more on oak trees. Each oak tree that grows, it grows slowly and it grows at its own pace. Each one grows at its own pace. The strongest oak tree of the forest is not the one that is protected from the violent storms and hidden from the harsh sun. It's the one that stands in the open unprotected where it is compelled to struggle for its existence against the winds and the rains and the scorching sun. Likewise, each believer grows at his own pace or her own pace, and that pace is determined by the Holy Spirit and the purposes that God has for that individual. Furthermore, the strongest believers, guess who they are? They're not the ones who have enjoyed a happy, pampered, easy life. No, it's not them. The strongest believers are those who have struggled against and endured many hardships, adversity, losses, sufferings, and trials. These are the ones that Isaiah 61 speaks of. These right here. Those are the ones that become the strongest oak trees or the strongest believers. Those who are poor in spirit. Those who are brokenhearted. Those who are captive. Those who are imprisoned in darkness. Those who mourn and grieve. Those in despair and who even faint from such a devastating loss. These believers have passed through many valleys and even some have gone through the dark night of the soul. In fact, inside these believers' hearts and souls is more room for Christ. They have more places inside of them for him to heal and take ownership and more places for him to live in and through them. Thus, it is these believers here who can know Christ at a deep level, and who Christ can use very powerfully for the display of his splendor. They have shared in Christ's sufferings, and thus will share in his glory. Romans 8, 17. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. So do you see the parallel between the believers and the oak trees? The strongest believers start out here. These are the little acorns that the Lord is planting for display of his glory and his splendor. So the acorns start out in these places. And when the Lord gets a hold of them over time, they will be called oaks of righteousness because they will be oaks of righteousness. So let's go over some of those again. Which of the oak trees are going to be the strongest over time when they're at the peak of their lives? Which ones are going to be the strongest? Are they going to be the ones that were raised in a greenhouse? Are they going to be the ones that had an easy life and they never had to go through a hurricane or a tornado? They never had any troubles and they were so pampered and protected. No, it's not those. That would not be the strongest oak tree and it's not going to be the strongest believer. The strongest oak trees are the ones that have to stand unprotected. Just on their own with no, nobody. Nobody to protect them. Nobody to, to really help them. The ones... The oak trees that have to struggle for their existence. They really have to struggle through maybe really intense winds, harsh rains, and just sun beating down on them. That harsh sun all the time. See, they have to struggle for their existence. The, tr the oak trees that are the strongest when they grow up have endured the most hardships, the most adversity, the most losses, the most sufferings, and the most trials. 
Those are the strongest oak trees, and they're also the strongest believers. They've also passed through many valleys, and even some have passed through the dark night of the soul. So if you are, and I believe that most of you are somewhere here, or have been at some place in your life, or you are here in multiple places now or have been, these are the acorn plantings of the Lord. That means those acorn plantings are you. You are being planted by the Lord like a little acorn. And it is his purpose for planting you in these type situations is so that you will be able to display his splendor and his glory to the world. That is his purpose and what he's doing with you and in you. And so the fruit of this, when we plant an acorn, if it has favorable soil, the fruit will be a big, wonderful oak tree. When we are planted here as believers, the fruit is going to be here. We are going to have more room for Christ to work with, to heal, to live in. We're going to have more places for him to heal and take ownership of when we surrender these places to him. He takes ownership. There are more places in us for him to live and abide and live through us. There's also the truth that these people who have been here in their lives, and especially those who've had multiple of these for prolonged periods, will be able and have the gift of knowing the Lord Jesus in a very special and deep way. And that is a wonderful gift. Also, these people he can use powerfully for the display of his splendor. So I'm here talking about oak trees and believers and the acorns to give you encouragement. I'm trying to encourage you to let you know what the big picture is, what the Lord is doing in your heart, in your soul, in your situation, in your whatever you're going through now. There's a lot to grieve about in this world. There's a lot to mourn about. There is plenty to be despairing over. And, you know, we can relate to all of these, can't we? But so the point is that you are an acorn planting of the Lord. And I want you to know that. You are, and he's working in your life. And as you learn to trust him at deeper and deeper levels, you are going to look back one day and you're going to have been here and here. And that root is going to have really, really burrowed down. And there's going to be, when you look in the mirror, you're going to see a big, beautiful oak tree. And it's going to be you. And so you will be a symbol of goodness, strength, endurance, and knowledge to the world. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. I hope you have a little bit deeper understanding of Isaiah 61 and this verse, uh, number uh, 1 through 3. And I pray that you will seek to see things from God's perspective because it makes life so much easier. When we see it from our own perspective, it is just destabilizing. I don't even want to do that ever again in my life because I, I just get so unstable. So I pray that this will help you to become more stable and I pray that it gives you hope and purpose in what you're going through now because the Lord doesn't do anything by mistake and he never wastes any troubles or sorrows or sufferings. So this is to encourage you and I pray that it, that it will. And I pray that in Jesus' name, and I will see you guys again soon.